The main target of the present operation is the Irish Republican Army, which has been responsible for recent acts of terrorism There is no such thing as political murder, political bombing or political violence. There is only criminal murder, criminal bombing and criminal violence. We will not compromise on this. We fought a war for 30 years, but we're expected not to be messed up. You had to be extra tough. You know, everything was kept inside. People bury it and they don't want it ever to come back because they couldn't cope. Oh, yeah. Let's see if I'd wrap around where we're going. I'm going to be in trouble already with no belt. Oh, shit. Mm. I could have brought mine over. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, it's a wee bit Not more. Tape, is it? Huh? That's a bars in the chat, anyway. Breathe in. <laughs> breathe in. I am breathing in. Sick. That's it. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. That looks good. Let's see. Glasses. Yep. Mm. Okay. Let me say. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. Good stuff. Ready to go? Santa's coming. Hello. Good morning. What's your name? Hiya. Hiya. Hello. Yeah, okay, we'll get him in. Hey, look at the camera. Big smile, big cheese. Okay, thank you. Hello, Kevin. How are you? What is you? This is for you, okay? For Christmas? I'll get your photo taken with Santa. As a child growing up, you're not supposed to see houses being burnt. You're not supposed to see people who you know personally actually being shot and killed. Emotionally, you almost have put all that away. But that happened to someone else. That happened in a, in a different life. Bye-bye. Merry Christmas. But this thing is haunting, haunting me. That was the first one I remember. It was from August 69. And then it's just been literally hundreds and hundreds of people have been killed. Where are we? 
Yeah. See a fellow, Michael Coulbon? Uh-huh. He was killed alone with his half brother. Carl McFarland. That was my sister's ex boyfriend. Mickey Smithmore. All right. Yvonne Lumley, shot dead in Alec Maskey's house. Mm-hmm. Billy Kane was shot dead in the New Lodge. Tom Donaghy, I spent years in prison with. Obviously the most important person here for me, in a personal sense, would be my, my grandfather, Philip Gary. He would have been the oldest. Yeah, he was the oldest. I was killed that night. You know, so... I just destroyed our family ever since. Your grandfather's not supposed to be blown to pieces when, when you're 13 or 14 years of age. The fact that, that, that he was murdered for nothing. I mean, he was just an ordinary Catholic, the same as the other, fifth, the other 14 men, women and children. So here was 15 people who were just, just obliterated by, uh, by a unionist death squad. We were looking for photographs, you know, old photographs, um, to show people what I, <laughs> what I physically looked like before I went to prison. The amount of photographs that I'm not in, to understand, you know, uh, weddings, um, birthdays, Christmases, major family events from 1976 until 1988, and I, I missed them all. I missed every single one of them. Memories that, 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 are, that, are, that are gone and that can never be replaced. Go ahead. Yay. Ho, ho, ho. Well done, darling. The tours that we do are, are done by former political prisoners, and each of us has a story to tell. It's a story about our politics, about our history, about our families and our communities. Anywhere in this area here, you can walk around and you can almost turn a corner and look at it and remember someone who was killed. You know, this is, this is where they were physically shot dead. But I suppose a lot of us are dealing with our demons, a lot of us are dealing with our, with our own past. August 1969, I heard my first gunfire. And then all of a sudden, just the place went crazy. 
All I seen was British soldiers on our streets with armoured vehicles. No one knew what to do. Policemen who were attacking vehicles. British soldiers breaking into houses, smashing, killing people, shooting people. Soldiers do a bomb at my mummy. And, and I remember being very, very afraid. We were only young kids. We were only our, our mid-teens and things like that. New fairness, and the boy with us was shot dead. Everyone was connected by sadness. She felt it's so it's actually three hunger singers from Belfast. Bobby was 27 when he died. Joe McDonald was the oldest. And then Kieran Tackerley. So it's an amazing thing, I think, even standing here now, that here was men that were prepared to lay down their lives for me. So for me personally, Bobby's an inspiration. Mm -hmm. Bobby inspires me. If I feel low, if I feel down, all you have to do is think of Bobby, think of the other hunger strikers who you knew you know, who was in the prison with us at the time. And that's what lifts me and keeps me going. Greater love hath no man than he laid down his life for his friends. I was 11 years of age. And you can imagine all those houses there being attacked. The loyalists, um, the police, the peace specials, all coming in and all, they're all firing up here. I mean, who, who were these people who were coming into this area to kill us? No, to kill, you almost said they're coming in to kill my daddy, they're coming in to kill my mummy. And why was the police who's meant to protect the people? Why are they on the side of the people who are doing the attacking? And then that's, if you like, when the community fell back upon itself. If we can't be defended by the state, you know what I mean? If the police can't defend you, what hope have you? And I think that's when the people fell back on their own resources. Mm -hmm. And for them, the resource available was the IRA. All you knew it was our community was being attacked. My family were being attacked. You started to wonder then, what, what, what do you do? Do you pretend all this just isn't happening? Or do you try to play some sort of part as a Republican or as an IRA volunteer? You felt you were joining a part of history. And that you were now going to be able to start to fight for, for your country, to start to fight for your freedom, to start to fight for your community, and to start to fight for your people. I felt immensely, immensely proud. It was made to be understood very clearly that what you were joining was something very serious, it was something very dangerous, that you could end up um, possibly in, in prison for the rest of your life, or more likely, you'd probably end up dead. For us, being 16, 17, 18 years of age at that time, in a life or death situation, where you were actually being physically taught to use real weapons that can and do and did kill people.
and we went in to place the poems in Belfast City Centre. Some of the poems would have been, you know, small, or some would have been very big. That just became like a common part of your 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 job or a common part of your day after a while then, you know. It's hard to forget, you know, what it was like when it, when you were really um, under pressure. There's always an uneasy feeling at the back of your mind about hurting someone, or especially about trying to kill someone. A lot of innocent people, a lot of soldiers have been killed, a lot of policemen have been killed. We have taken the brunt. We beat like believe we were going to change Ireland. We know who the criminals Things don't get any easier as you get older. Your pause comes back on you and keeps repeating. So there's a squad going to go in, and a squad going to go up, and we'll meet somewhere in the middle. Oh my god. You come with us, sir. There's enough of them. Uh, you wouldn't mind, it was just no. Yeah. It's the yeah. ice, it's the ice. It's, I fell the day coming out of the Pony Chicken Center. <laughs> Good ride, don't buy some Peter's Chapel. Here, but see the only thing you were worried about? Yeah. Did anybody see me? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> you could have broke your leg, your arm, or your back. <laughs> all, all you're worried about. Did anybody see? Well, how is she? Are you? Me? We're doing an our, um, our hunger strike committee. Oh, I'm doing that. Aye, so we're launching it tomorrow night. Oh, Going to have a meeting up in the Davos to see. Get the old people like yourselves back that helped out in 1981. Okay then, I'll see you later on. Okay. The community looked after us and was 100% supportive of what we were doing. Um, so now is the time to try to do whatever you can. That might be trying to get to, to get their quality of life better. Or if there's campaigns, you know, all that type of activity, I feel now is a privilege or an honour to be doing on behalf of the people who looked after us and who basically, you know, protected us for so long. One of the times I was actually involved in the car, I think someone must have seen us getting out of the cars or whatever. But we had the weapons, we had the explosives, and we went in to place the bombs. But on the way back, you could actually hear you know, the, the, the police and the sirens. So we actually had to jump out 
and leave the car. So what happened was then when the, when the police came, they obviously had no control of the car. So they started to do the, the forensics. What they actually found was a full palm print, you know, all like against the, the passenger side front window. So they, they then had my fingerprints in a car that was used in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an operation. I was lucky in a way that I was arrested and, and I ended up in prison as opposed to some of my other friends who didn't, you know, and they were just killed and died in the, in the conflict. Yeah. Lord God, may we, your people who look forward to the birthday of Christ, experience the joy of salvation. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant us peace in our day and your mercy keep us free from sin. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Take a few moments to offer to each other a sign of God's peace. Peace be with you, God of the Father. Peace be with you. Your first night as a sentence prisoner, that, that's when you realise that the, the door bang shut. You know, I mean, there was a big bang, and then you were standing there with all your, you know, your, your three blankets and your two sheets and, and your pillow, and then your heart sank. I mean, that was the, that was the cold, hard reality. Is this, is this it? You know what I mean? Am I going to be in these conditions for the next 20 years? I was in cell 16 and the beating started at cell 2. So I could hear men screaming. I mean, you could hear punches and slaps. And, and I reckon if they had a cap beating us the way they did for that intensity, for another... I don't know. I don't know how long you could have lasted. So, uh, yeah. Well, at least it's terrifying. You know, they were walking towards you and they were dressed in all this uniform. And then they'd be banging away at these. The prison staff, if you can imagine, this is what they were dressed like, okay? So this would have been their helmets when they were coming in to search you in the cell, okay? So you imagine prisoners naked in their cells, and this is the type of rad squad they used to come into the prison to beat you. In terms of um, what's known as the mirror search, and this was probably the most, one of the most obscene, degrading, uh, episodes that ever happened inside the prisons. So you can imagine someone squeezing this hand here, and someone squeezing that hand, and then someone punching in the stomach automatically. 
you're gonna you're gonna be bent and you're like that there. Okay. The purpose then was for them to search inside your body. Okay? So you imagine the screws behind you and they had the rubber gloves and they would actually stick their finger. It's actually a salty by sticking their fingers up your, your, your back passage, up your anus. And then the, the screw who's just done that walks around in front of you and they're still being held. And he's, 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 he has the rubber glove on and there's excrement all over his hand. And then he says, tell you, open your mouth. So you know, you know what's coming next. Do you understand? Because the screw's heavy. And then he'll, he'll come over with the, the, the rubber glove and he sticks the rubber glove in your mouth and he, he rubs it all around. And that's, that's what they call the mirror search. So this is, this is what some of the political prisoners ended up like after being attacked. This was during the, 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 the rats when the prisoners fought back. I can actually remember one time where you were you were almost in daily contact with God. Do you know what I mean? You had this relationship or this personal line of communication. Um, but you were saying, look, here's here's the crack, God. I'm going to lie down here, okay? I want to go to sleep. I'm going to put my head down and I'm going to pull the, the blankets over my head. And the deal is... I don't wake up in the morning. Do you understand? Your life had been reduced to that point, that low lowest of and you couldn't think of you couldn't think of anywhere positive or any, you know what I mean uplifting or whatever. So you were actually on the on the verge. You weren't talking about suicide. I mean if you know what I mean, you weren't talking about physically killing yourself. You were trying to say, Look, I wanna doze off here, but to be honest, I don't want to come back. I don't want to wake up the next morning till all this again. Do you know what I mean? And that's, that's I suppose, was a common theme. Then it wasn't always like that. I mean, because sometimes your comrades left at you, especially um, sometimes you go back from the visits and you got, a, you got, you, you, you got beat. Do you know what I mean? You, you, you got hammered and the screws of the... the Brought you back down the wing and then opened the cell door and threw you in. So you were, that was you, like a, a rag doll, and you were laying, you were laying on the floor. And then, but all you heard was, you know, everybody else was banging you know, the, uh, the third chamber pots. Don't let that bastard get you down, sort of thing. So all that, if you like, was, was, was a way that. You get up and you wipe the blood off and whatever else. You know what I mean? And you get up to the window and you start talking. And you all right? Are you okay? Is any bones broken? All the rest. So you sort of try to work out: was it your ribs that was damaged, or was it what what it was? So that was that was you being lifted by your comrades. Yeah. But uh, so what do you want to eat? There's chops there, there's sausages, and there's um vegetable rolls. Yeah, some of them potatoes are not the best. No, I mean, so Christmas is meant to be for, for fun and for, for family. And what do you do at Christmas? You celebrate it with kids. What? Uh, Christmas Day, you get up, you open the presents. Yeah. But if, you, if you're... Uh, if you don't have that, then I think that's a big loss.
too, because your daddy loves grandchildren. I know, he does. And he, would, he would never ever say it to me, but I think he regrets, he knows why. I think. Well, because he's no grandchildren called McClellan. Exactly. I know. He's nobody to carry on the name. I know, well, it's, it's a big, big, big thing for our family. Yeah. So I just want to be on my own. Yeah. I just want to be away from all of that. I just sit here and make my, I don't know what I'll do, a duck or a <laughs> goose. Not do turkey at home. Um, and you, you regret. Then you, know, then you do go up to your family, like your brother. Oh, exactly. But to me, that's the. That's, that's You'd never I, wake up on a Christmas morning to kids. No, exactly. You'd never. So, uh, no, I, I would wake up and probably cry my eyes in. Even to this day, it's, uh, uh, it doesn't get any easier. The nightmares are always there. And many a times, uh, you would come down and see him four in the morning, you'd sit in the darkness, and you'd cry your eyes out and things like that, you know? This conflict may have ended, but there's still people fighting a war in their heads. For us, the struggle, has not finished. 